more and more men are, are calling themselves feminists, and they seem to be supporting that. President Obama, the first so-called black president, um, called himself the first feminist president. And wasn't he such a failure? He was a true failure. And I have with me Gregory Jackson, better known as Onision, a popular YouTuber and music producer known for comedy and dramatic videos, personal stories, and cultural commentary. Um, Onision, should I call you Onision or Gregory? You do you. It's either way. Okay, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for inviting me. So you call yourself a feminist. Is that true? Uh, no. Oh, you do not. <laughs> <laughs> I, here's, here's the thing. There's a, a big social uh, grief over anybody who calls themselves a feminist online for some reason. There's this uh, paranoia. About 100 feminists that you'll meet. Maybe one's a little weird, but people like to focus on the one feminist that's a little weird. And it's a lot less dramatic to just call yourself an egalitarian, which is, encompasses the basically the same thing, only it doesn't necessarily focus on one gender or sex other than the other. Right. So just to clear it up, I'm black. I'm a little slow. So do you call yourself a feminist? Yes or no? Uh, technically, I, I, fit, I fit the definition of both an egalitarian and a <laughs> feminist. Amazing. And why is that? Why would a man become a feminist? Uh, let me ask you this. Why wouldn't a man become a feminist? Because it's a woman's thing, and uh, men and women are different. Uh, and so I don't know why a man wants to um, get rid of his masculinity to, becoming a fem to become a feminist. Can you tell me where it says that feminism emasculates men? I mean, look around you. That's what we've been dealing with for the last 60 years or so. Feminists turning men into women, and it's amazing. So why do you call yourself a feminist? Why would you um, deny your masculinity to become a feminist, knowing that you are a male? What's the purpose? Uh, where does it say that a feminist— Can you answer that for me? <laughs> what, is, what is the purpose of being a feminist? Yeah, is that your question? since you are a male, why not become masculine— rather than going the other way. That's not what feminism is. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Feminism is merely looking at issues where women are treated unequally, and it's uh, making them equal. But how about where men are treated unequally? Men sure, are... yeah, that's, that's where egalitarianism comes in. It, it focuses on both issues and doesn't treat one as if it's a bigger priority than the other, even though one may be a big pr bigger priority. Depends yeah. on who you ask. Uh, masculinity should be the bigger priority today. Don't you agree? It's a it's a big priority if you have masculinity issues or if you're insecure. Uh, because if you notice, like with President Trump, for an example, well, let's do Obama first. Obama admitted to being the first feminist president. And, it, and the folks who hate masculinity, they loved Obama and they worship him. And he ended up being the worst president on this side of heaven. We look at President Trump, of whom I call the great white hope. He's uh, um, white. That, hey, that's not that's not accurate. <laughs> What's he's, not? The, he's the great red hope. <laughs> <laughs> he's a uh, white, male, Christian, conservative uh, man of power. And they hate him because he does have that power and he's holding the country together, and they don't like that. They want a soft man like Obama. So I would think that all men would, and women who love men would go toward masculinity. You agree? Well, the, the problem is that we have two political parties, so no matter who's president, you're most likely going to have someone that divides the country. Obama divided it, and so did Trump. And we have very strong opinions because those are very strong personalities. Yeah, uh, well, President Trump is uh, dividing the good from the evil. Did you, oh, uh, are you aware <laughs> of uh, um, the slut walk? You know who Amber Rose is? Uh, refresh me. She is a godless liberal who think who is trying to take the shame out of women being sluts. 
And so they had a slut walk in Los Angeles about three weeks ago now, give or take. And Must have been very uh, fun, to, <laughs> fun to watch. It was disgusting. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the sluts came out. And I think they did it in New York as well. Uh, so what do you think about women trying to take the shame out of being, well, some women, the liberal women, trying to t- take the shame out of being sluts? Well, if you could give me a real disadvantage that's consistent with somebody being, by definition, a slut, we might be able to actually talk about slut validation shaming and that. (laughs) And so so let me ask, should they take the shame out of being sluts? Uh, If it increases the chance of unwanted pregnancy and disease, then there's a reason to feel like that's not the best thing. Amazing. You've done videos about anxiety, depression, and cutting and self-harm. Um, in your video called My Depression Quotes, you share thoughts that went through your head when you had major depression. Um, what caused you to become depressed? Being very unhappy with the situation that I was in in my life, I realized that my country, uh, specifically the military, was significantly uh, hypocritical or otherwise uh, self-destructive, and the destructive aspect came in uh, toward me, where I was targeted and I was uh, basically stepped on. And it was awkward because I joined the military because of patriotism, and I was one of the only people who joined that way because they actually took a, a poll, a public poll, and most everyone joined the military for college. So I slowly realized that the military doesn't really care about its own. And I became suicidal because the whole reason I joined the military was because I believed in my country. And I started to realize that my country didn't give a crap about its own people. Did you see action? No, I, I, was, I only served in uh, South Korea. So they're technically at war, but no war, actual war. And so I'm not quite understanding what made you depressed. Yeah, well, if you think that the only thing that can make you depressed in life is going to war, then you're going to not understand depression very often. And so give me an example of um, the injustice. Uh, what, give me an example of exactly what happened to you that caused you to become depressed since you were not involved in a war. Well, I want you to imagine having a dad and your dad looks at you and says, you're a waste of human life, you're a scumbag, and I'm ashamed of you. That's basically what happened. Uh, for uh, a big part of me was looking at the country, the military, et cetera, as my dad, as I grew up with, out of dad mostly. So I was looking at this this whole group of honor and these people I've been trained to think are amazing human beings. And then uh, a couple different of my superiors said that I was oozing with dirt bag, that I was a scumbag, et cetera, when I had done nothing. I literally, literally did nothing other than just uh, walk around and and do my job, and I was I was described as a the know-it-all type or the type of person who tries to do everything right and f- plays by the rules. I was made fun of for playing by the rules, and then you know when you see your superiors act like you out of all the people are a scumbag when you you pass all your tests and you're doing a very good job, uh, that could that could push you into a depression. And I was already going there because I was already having problems with my peers and them threatening to uh, physically assault me, et cetera. And, you know, events after events after events, eventually you get depressed and realize you're totally wasting your life on a completely hypocritical and horrible organization. That's amazing. Was your father a military man as well? No, my father was a Christian pastor. And you were not close to him? No, he's an accused child molester. Was your father and mother married at any point? Yes. So they were yeah. to, they were together while you were growing up. Yeah. Amazing. Well, no, no, no. I'm sorry. They they divorced when I was uh, two years old. And so, is that's that that's why you have a you had a weak demeanor while being in the military because you did not have a strong father to set that example. And well, what what to you uh, makes a meek a weak demeanor? Because uh, I, I passed uh, every physical test above, uh, way above average. And I passed, I passed all the mental tests above, well, I don't know, yeah, above average as well on those. So if I'm passing every single test with uh, flying colors, I'm getting ribbons, et cetera, what is a weak demeanor to you? Well, men who were raised by good fathers are mentally and emotionally strong. 
And so when they go through challenges and issues of life, they overcome them rather than um, so common to them, uh, you know, the issues taking over their lives and causing them to become depressed. So you are you saying that that people with good fathers never get depressed? Right. That's interesting. I'd like to see anything backing that up. Um, you're looking at one now. Yeah, I know, but I'd like to see something that actually statistically proves that to be a relevant statement. Were you closest to your mother? So were you close to your mother? No. You were not close to her either? No. Why weren't you close to your father or, and mother? Uh, How, about your mother? Re- How about your mother? Uh, I wasn't close to my mom just because my mom used to uh, hit me a lot, spank me, etc. We weren't really emotionally connected uh, significantly. A lot of my childhood just because I don't really understand or relate to people who hit their children. That's amazing. And so are you, have you forgiven them for what they've done to you? Yeah. My mom was a single, a single parent. So, I mean, she only, she only handled her kids the way she was handled as a kid. Yeah. And that stuff, that just stuff repeats itself generation after generation. So someone has to correct it. And I figured to start with me. And have you forgiven your father as well? No, absolutely not. And will you ever forgive him? No. <laughs> no. But, but if you don't, you're never going to have peace in your life. I have peace with uh, not forgiving. No, it's impossible to have peace unless you forgive. So do you still deal with depression? Wait, do you forgive Hitler then? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I could quote you on... You saying, I forgive Hitler. I hold no um, resentment or anger to anyone. Well, I, I do not forgive Hitler. But, but you're never going to be happy unless you forgive your father. You know, that's your opinion. No, no, no. It's a fact. It's not an opinion. Are you, are you a, a, a psychologist or you went to college for, uh, for that major? No, you can't trust those people who go to college. They are as dumb oh. as a doorknob. Uh, oh, okay. But I am a, a, a pastor, so I deal with this kind of stuff all the time. Oh, well, that's, that's why you would say that college people are dumb as a doorknob. They pastor. are. They, they only yeah. give you, they, they hook you, take your money, and then they send you over what to about, a doctor to give about, you drugs. What about people who go to college for uh, Christian studies? That's dumb, too. Really? Oh, yeah. Because if, if God called a man to be a pastor or reverend or whatever, he also teaches them and give them what they need to say and do. No human being can give that to you. Only dummies go to school to, only those who have not been called by God go to school to learn what God will have you do. Those so people are you, don't know. So are you saying that, that if, you, if you never encountered the Bible, you would automatically know the teachings of the Bible? Right on. It's oh, written, wow. Because it's written in your heart. When you well, were, that seems impossible. When you were a child, you knew the truth. But because of your trauma, the trauma of your parents, you forgot that truth because you returned away from it. I want to ask you about, um, so you said that your father was a sexual predator. How do you know that's true? I, I said he was accused. Accused and I know of that? Yeah, I know he's accused because I, I spoken to people who accused him. And do you believe those people? Well, when it's multiple people who have no incentive and it's an embarrassing thing for a person to even talk about, yeah, when you see one person who has every reason to deny it and another person who has every reason to not say it, you know, and they're saying it anyway, you just kind of got to go with the people that you grew up with, the people that you trust. So it's we're talking about uh, a child and multiple adults. So but it's when not it, like just it's not one person. It's not he said, she said, but it's they it, said, he said. Isn't it the right thing to go to your father and ask if it's true? Because people say all kinds of things now. They can be angry at you, yeah, make up things. Yeah, but we're talking, both we're, talking, we're talking about three female adults and one female child. Do you hate your father? Sure, yeah. I, I oh. hate child molesters, yes. So that's why you want to believe this because you hate your father. No, I hate him because of what I was uh, educated on. But you hated him prior to hearing those things about him. According what's, your, to you. what's your evidence of this? Well, you said you had all these problems while being in the military and your father left when you were very young. That alone can cause you to hate your father leaving you 
in that no, manner. No, he, he, he didn't leave as much as he was simply kicked out. And then he went to a state where it wasn't enforced for him to pay child support. And he didn't pay child support either. So. You, uh, you have shown handguns and shotguns in your video in yeah. a serious way, in a comedic way. What point are you trying to make? Or are you trying to make any point by doing any points by doing that? That there's a lot of different videos with a lot of different fake guns, so it just depends on the video. Are you a Second Amendment person? Uh, kind of. Uh, yeah. I I I believe that statistically, I actually don't believe statistically. I know statistically that guns are just as dangerous as cars. Uh, and so if we're gonna legalize guns, we should probably legalize other things that are more dangerous than guns. And there are a lot of things that are more dangerous than guns, like hamburgers. So. <laughs> All right. Um, you talk about transgender and gender nonconformist issues. Um, what is a non nonconformist person? A nonconformist. Yeah. I feel like I've vaguely talked about that because I'm not very serious about it. But a nonconformist is just somebody who doesn't look at society and say, yeah, I want to be just like that, I'd imagine. So is it true that you're married? Yes. And this person's name is, what's her name? Is it a woman? Lainey. Uh, yes. Lainey. Yes. And, uh, and Lainey referred to, preferred to be referred to as they or them. Is that possible? Is that true? Yes. What's wrong with Lainey? Uh, again, I would, I would have to talk to you about that if you were a person who was trained in the field of psychology. Oh, so Lainey has issues? That's why she would prefer to be called they or them? See, that's something for a psychologist to talk about. I, I don't know what, what you would call their situation. And what do you call your wife, Lainey? What do you call her? Well, when you're married, what kind of household do you want to have? Do you want to have a happy household? Or do you want to have a household that's just judgmental and chaotic? What do you call Lainey? You mean as far as their gender or their sex? Because those are two different things. But I don't know what it means to want to be referred to as they or them. And since yeah, I it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like anything. Like somebody who likes uh, the Terminator series. Uh, some of us not, might not like the Terminator series, but that doesn't mean that it's not valid to like the Terminator series. So we just say, okay, that's cool that you do that, and I'll do this. Amazing. So in a few minutes that we have left here, you are a popular YouTuber. How did that come about? How does one become a popular YouTuber? Uh, I've made thousands of videos, uh, worked every day, most every day for the last 10 years. And uh, I work long hours, typically. So, you know, eventually uh, you start to figure stuff out and uh, build yourself. And so it's just a matter of doing the work and putting the YouTubes out there. How do you decide which subject matters to deal with? Uh, if you want to make it on YouTube these days, you avoid controversial topics just because YouTube is currently uh, censoring and uh, stamping down anybody who stands out as far as uh, politics go or having an opinion in general. Um, did you vote for President Trump? No. You did not? Did you vote for Hillary? Yes. Amazing. Um, are, you, are you happy with the president now, even though you didn't vote, it for, didn't vote for him, now that he's I, uh, making America great again, do you wish now you had voted for him? Why would I vote to ban perfectly decent human beings from our country? Are you referring to illegal aliens? I'm referring to the, the Muslim ban that he tried to push through multiple times. Well, because some of them want to take your life. They don't like, yeah. they don't like you. That's why. <laughs> some Christians want to take your life. What's your point? No, but they don't want to cut your head off. I don't know of any Christians who want to take your life. And if there are some, it's very few, but in the, um, in the Muslim world, it is look, Google the Christian thing. terrorists. You'll find plenty. I'm sorry? Google Christian terrorists. You'll find plenty. Gregory, thank you so much for coming on. Very, very interesting, man. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right.